In this video, we will learn how to draw a free body diagram and how to compute reaction forces of a rigid body. So here is our example. A crane has a mass of M and it's used to lift a crate of a mass of 2M. M is the mass. It is supported by a pin at A. So here is the pin, a frictionless pin, and a rocker at B. The center of gravity of the crane is at C. Here is the center of gravity. Determine the reactions at A and B. So we need to determine the reaction forces at the point A and at the point B. In order to solve this problem, we first need to sketch a free body diagram. So what is a free body diagram? A free body diagram of an object is a diagram in which the actions of supports are replaced by forces and the action of the external load is again replaced by a force. So first we introduce a coordinate system. This will be our x-axis and this will be our y-axis. Then we sketch a diagram of the crane. So here is our crane. Now, the reaction force of a rocker at B looks like this. This is R, B, X. How did we find this direction? Well, here is the rocker and here is the external supporting plane and the reaction force is perpendicular to the support plane. So here is our reaction force. Now, what should we do in the case of a pin? Since the pin is frictionless, its reaction force can be in any direction. However, we will, re we will decompose this unknown force into two components. We are going to decompose it into the x component. This will be our RA x and into y component. So this will be r a y. Now the action of a crate on the body can be repla replaced by a force 2g. We are going to denote this force by 2g. Why? Because the mass of the crane is equal to M and the weight of the crane will be G. So the weight of the crane is acting at the center, C, center of gravity, and it's directed downwards. So here is our G. So G is equal to mass times small g, where small g is the Earth's gravitational acceleration. This is our free body diagram. This free body diagram will help us to determine the reaction forces. So we need to determine the reaction forces R A X, R A Y and R B X. So how are we going to determine the reaction forces? Well, since this system is in equilibrium, we know that the reaction forces and the external forces should satisfy three equations. The first equations, the first equation is sum of all the forces in x direction should be equal to zero. I is one to n. So sum of all the forces in the x direction should be equal to zero. Now, let's look at the free body diagram. In the x direction, we have the force Rax and Rbx. So we write down Rax plus 
r b x should be equal to zero. From this equation, we obtain that r a x equals minus r b x. So this is our first equation. The second equation reads as follows. So sum of all the forces in the y direction should be equal to zero. So what are the forces in the y direction? So what do we have? We have R A Y minus G acting at C and minus 2G originating from the crate and this is equal to zero. So this equation tells us that R A Y equals 3G. So this is our first reaction force. We found out that R A Y is equal 3G. This was our second equation. And we need an additional third equation to compute the reaction forces. So the third equation is the moment equation. So sum of moments of all the forces acting on the body should be equal to zero. So when we say a moment of a force, we always need to define a point with respect to which we are going to compute the moment. In this case, we are going to choose the point A. So this is our moment equations. Why did we choose the point A? We chose the point A because the action lines of the forces RAX and RAY are passing through the point A. Consequently, these two forces will not create a moment around the force A and our equations will simplify. So let's analyze the moment equation. Here is the force RBX. Its moment around the point A equals the intensity of this force times the shortest distance between the action line of the force RBX and the point. So it's basically 2 times RBX. In this case, the moment has a positive sign. Why does it have a positive sign? Well, if the force revolves in counterclockwise contra around the point A, then this corresponds to a plus sign. So, mathematical positive direction is usually counterclockwise. Mathematically negative di direction is clockwise. So, if a force revolves around the point in clockwise direction, the moment will be negative. This is the case for the force G. So the moment of the force G is equal to the product of the force intensity and the shortest distance between the action line of the force and the point A. So this is the shortest distance from here to here and it's equal to 2. And the sign is negative since the force revolves in a mathematically negative direction. And the third force is the force 2G. Its moment is equal to a product of the force intensity. In this case, it's 2G and the shortest distance between the action line of 2G and the point A. And this distance is equal to 4. Basically, it's the distance from here to here. So it's equal to 4. So it's 4 times 2G with the negative sign. And this is equal to 0. From this equation, we can compute RBX. So RBX becomes... RBX is equal to 2G plus AG is 10G over 2. So it's equal to 5G. We can double check. So 
2g plus 8g is 10g, 10g over 2 equals 5g. So we are able to compute rbx. Now, we have rbx, we have ray, and we can obtain rax from the first equation. So the first equation tells us that rax is equal to minus rbx, and that's equal to minus 5g. So here are the forces. Now, we have obtained that Rax is, an, is equal to negative. Physically, this, this means that in practice, Rax force has an opposite direction. So this is the exact or true direction of the force Rax.